Ciao a tutti! Oggi vi presentiamo l'epica saga di Assetto Corsa Competizione, orgoglio e gioiello di Italia e il più grande gioco mai realizzato. Tratteremo di quanto sia fantastico e di come nessun altro simulatore sarà mai all'altezza. <coughs> 2018 was an exciting year for sim racing. The amazing modding crew behind CSP and Soul were on the cusp of releasing one of the biggest literal game changers in sim racing history. iRacing had just added Rally Cross to its roster of content, while Half Actor 2's new developers, Studio 397, had released their endurance pack and magnificent laser scanned recreation of Sebring, ushering in the modern age of track quality. In the background, however, a modest Italian company were toiling away to create the pseudo-sequel to their smash hit Assetto Corsa. Released in 2014, Assetto Corsa had taken the sim racing scene by storm with its combination of accessibility, diverse range of vehicles and easy mod ability. It quickly became one of the most known sim racing properties in the world. Kunos, the developer, had decided to take a slight detour for their next game. Instead of creating Assetto Corsa 2 and focusing on a straight evolution, they instead decided to double down on the most popular non-F1 racing class in the world, GT3. As expected, many fans were miffed by this, feeling betrayed and bellowing about the common tropes about GT3 cars driving on rails, being no fun and generally just providing an underwhelming and limited racing experience. Given the class's massive focus on BOP, balance of performance, keeping the diverse grid of cars all closely competitive with one another led to a situation where the cars, despite their varying platforms, drove quite comparably. The reason for this, in the real world, is that GT3s are made to be driven by customer teams. Amateurs, as well as professionals. Paid seats is how many competitions are funded, so it was important to create a class that a less seasoned, wealthy gentleman driver could easily get into and get up to pace without putting the drivers around him at risk. As a result, GT3s rely substantially on traction control and ABS assists, both of which are notably absent in top-tier open-wheeler racing like Formula 1. That said, Kunoz doubled down. They intended to create the best GT3 simulator in the world, and they had licensed the brand new Unreal Engine 4 to help them do it. The initial demos from game expos were mighty impressive. It truly looked next-gen, and the sounds were completely transformed from the original Assetto Corsa, being far closer in quality to Dirt Rally and Race Room. The upcoming sim, dubbed Assetto Corsa Competizione, had a tiered early access release. Early buyers got access to the sim as it reached the end of development, being fed a car and a track at a time. Early access release number one came out on September 12th, 2018. I remember it well, as I had just gotten into sim racing proper and was chomping at the bit to try this seemingly revolutionary new sim. They gave us access to just one track and car, the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 and the Nürburgring GP circuit. Ironically, despite being an absolute Nordschleife of freak at the time, I would never taken a moment to properly learn the GP circuit, as this was legitimately my first introduction to the more refined section of the Nürburgring. Packing my formidable Thrustmaster T500 RS, I got stuck in. My initial impressions? Very muted. The car quite literally drove like it was on rails, had no progressive grip loss, nor provided any indication that a car was transferring its weight. In fact, the initial iteration of the force feedback engine did not provide much of anything other than a heavy damping force with low details buried miles underneath. While this may or may not have been true to the real cars, which are known to be power steering assisted and quite muted, with the driver feeling the car's motion more with their butt, nevertheless created a situation where the force feedback was utterly useless to the driver in the pursuit of controlling the car. This created, as one might expect, a very rigid driving experience. You had to hit every braking point perfectly, every steering input at just the right angle, and not overdriving the car a single bit, because the moment the rear stepped out, that was it. The car would pirouette faster than Mickey Mouse doing Disney on Ice after a coke bender. As always, this began a fiery debate within the community with the expected lines being drawn. The hopefuls claiming that this is exactly how GT3s drive and real drivers never have to put in any corrective moves at all, with the cars driving on rails and being astoundingly unforgiving whenever coming off said rails. Luckily, the veracity of these comments was equally matched with some in the community claiming they preferred the feeling of the original Assetto Corsa, which at the time, it was fair to say, drove like a far more forgiving sim. A bit of a patchy beginning, it's fair to say. I would often go back as each new incremental early access release came out, only to quickly return to my then-favourite R Factor 2 within a few hours. 
While each new car and track came with an impressive level of accompanying audiovisual detail, it was very clear that something fundamental within the driving experience of ACC would require an overhaul. As time wore on and real-life GT3 drivers referred to elements such as the curb behaviour of ACC being quite unlike real life, it became obvious that an upgrade to the core physics model was required in order to bring ACC into alignment with its next-generation presentation. It appears that one of the most unforgiving and unrealistic aspects of early ACC was the tyre collision detection with complex curbs. This is what led to the early Russian roulette feeling whenever one went aggressively onto rippled curbing. You had a chance of the car behaving normally and getting the exit you planned for, but you equally had a chance of some equation being botched in the back end, then having the wheel suddenly yanked out of your control and the car sent into an uncontrollable spin. Kind of like the iconic Top Gun scene. Some continued to claim that this was in fact realistic, but were thankfully corrected by the real drivers who informed them that yes, in fact these curbs are quite safely used in such fashion all the time, and they had to deviate their driving approach from what they would do in the real world in order to circumvent the sim's shortcomings. Luckily, it appears the developers were listening. This led to what was still, in my opinion, the most significant update in ACC's history. The 5-point tire model update. Most high-end simulators these days, whether iRacing, R Factor 2, Automobilist 2, or even Beam and G, employ what can loosely be referred to as a physical tire model. That is, the tire is created as a three-dimensional geometric object not only for visual purposes, but also for the purposes of physics modeling. Assetto Corsa and Assetto Corsa Competizione, on the other hand, use a more rudimentary empirical model. Both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages, and it was ACC's more nuanced track design which really brought to the forefront the disadvantages of the empirical model. The developers had to expand the collision detection code so that not only did the simulator sample a single point directly underneath the center of the tire for the purposes of collision detection, but rather interpolate between an additional four points on the edges of the tire. This allowed the tires to finally ratify more complex curbing without erratically glitching out the amount of grip the car had. Once they did this, the driving experience became transformed. No more were drivers deathly afraid of taking curbs as they would in real life. This celebrated update began to revive a waning online ecosystem. Suddenly, some of the people who had run back to Assetto Corsa were once again driving an ACC. Around six months later, in late 2019, Kunos came to release their Chassis Flex simulation. While this is generally regarded as a subtle update, it did move the simulation in a positive direction. In addition with the incremental minor updates over the course of 2019, by early 2020, ACC essentially drove like a whole new game. Good thing too, as this saw the release of ACC's first DLC, the Intercontinental GT Pack. This pack expanded the base game with four iconic non-European circuits. Kailami in South Africa, Suzuka in Japan, Laguna Seca in the United States, and <coughs> Bathurst in my backyard. This laid the groundwork for ACC's second big DLC, the GT4 pack in mid-2020. While it's fair to say that GT4s are not the most popular car class in the world, it did allow Kunos to focus on modeling cars which are decidedly softer and more bouncier than GT3s. This revealed a key flaw in how damper calculations were being done, and was retroactively applied to make the GT3s even better. Many racers felt the GT4s were modeled at an even higher quality level than the GT3s, and as a result were even more fun to drive. There was more weight transfer, more playfulness, and the cars could be sent in a way that would be otherwise unthinkable in GT3s. Unfortunately, the relative lack of popularity of the GT4 class quickly led to it tanking in ACC, and largely only being reserved for novelty events and multi-class endurance racing. However, it served as a good litmus test, proving to many of the old guard who continued to proclaim Assetto Corsa was still the superior driving simulator, that ACC could in fact still simulate playful car behaviour. This was then followed up by another three-track expansion DLC called the British GT Pack, rounding out the main British tracks with Donington Park, Alton Park and Snedderton. ACC was now packing an impressive roster of content. From a sim once criticised for being immensely narrow, it now boasted one of the best collections in modern sim racing of high quality laser scan circuits, alongside a very complete roster of GT3 and GT4 cars, not to mention with a few niche one-offs in there such as ubiquitous Porsche Cup car and Lamborghini Super Trofeo. All of this eventually led us to, at the time of this video's making, ACC's most recent and major free update. 
version 1.8. Along with gifting players a free BMW M4 GT3, it also contained one of the biggest under the hood updates to the physics model ACC has seen since the 5.0 time model days. It includes a 400Hz physics refresh rate increase, upgrades to the time model for more sensitivity to temperature, tram lining on rippled curbs, NVIDIA DLSS and AMD FSR support for greatly improved frame rates, among many, many, many other additions. In the present day, this leaves Assetto Corsa Competizione as a very novel success story. What merely three years ago was a clunky sim in many ways lacking to its predecessor is now possibly the king of GT3 and GT4 simulation. This strategy of continual incremental updates over years, respecting the customers and aiming to offer them value for their investment over time is very welcome in the sim racing scene. We are now in early 2022 and looking forward to Assetto Corsa Competizione's potentially last DLC, the fabled USA pack, official name yet to be determined. So far we know it will come with Circuit of the Americas, packing the BMW M2 CS, updated Porsche Cup car and Ferrari Challenge with more cars and circuits yet to be announced. That's some pretty good mileage out of just one simulator. It's very easy to point to an example where Kunoz could have quite simply just cashed out on release and taken their consumer faith with them, simply counting the dollars, planning a few negligible content DLCs and immediately jumping to work on Assetto Corsa 2. But they didn't. They dug in, stuck it out and did the work to bring their simulator not only up to par, but to the head of the pack. A notable example of how poorly this could have gone would be Slightly Mad Studios. Renowned for releasing hugely incomplete sims, simply cashing in one or two minor DLCs, all the while barely touching on the swath of core issues in their sims, then bailing on their user base to cash in on the successive iteration of the series. Customers eventually catch on to this dishonorable profiteering behavior, and it leads to notable industry disasters such as Project Cars 3. Whatever your thoughts about Assetto Corsa Competizione, in the era of exploitative sales models like that of iRacing, it's hard to dispute that Kunos have done honorably by their customers. The amount of value a person gets by purchasing either the original Assetto Corsa Ultimate Edition or Assetto Corsa Competizione with its DLCs is hard to encapsulate in words. While ACC still has its blind spots like every other sim currently out there, including the way it handles dynamic track states, wet weather driving, undercarriage damage and setup exploits just to name a few, its journey is hard to characterize as anything other than a success story. With Kunos officially announcing plans to release Assetto Corsa 2 in 2024, one can't help but wonder what else they have up their sleeves, and how all the progress made to their physics engine during the ACC years will port over to a wider variety of cars. One thing is for sure, and that is, the huge present day player base who still main Assetto Corsa, bolstered by the impressive and ever improving CSP and Soul, will be looking forward to their favourite simulator franchise, once again representing more than just GT car racing and being able to celebrate wider car culture proper. Until next time, make sure to subscribe for future sim racing content, and I'll see you all later.